In this second tutorial, we will use formulas to solve real-world applications. So now we are in section 7.7 .7 in our texts, and we're talking about exponential and logarithmic applications. Here is a copy of your formula sheet, and I want to make a couple notes about your formula sheet. First of all, I'm not going to make you memorize these formulas, but you will need to get familiar with them and where all of the numbers go. You will not be using this actual piece of paper on your quiz, but I will give you the formula on your quiz. So another thing, in these formulas, there, um, I know you can read these and you can get familiar with these, but there's always an initial amount in this first one, which is the growth and decay formula. That initial amount might be the, the number of cells you have or the number of grams of a certain substance. Um, there might be an initial value, which is usually called the principal, which is why we call it P. Um, that amount, the initial amount, the principal that you're putting into your bank account. All of these initial amounts are right here in your formulas. They will always represent this coefficient. Your initial amount will always go right here in your formula as your coefficient. What that amount becomes, whether it grows into something or decays into something, will always be on the other side of the equal sign. So for example, in your compound interest formulas, hopefully your money is getting bigger in your bank account, otherwise that's a pretty bad bank account. Your initial deposit goes here as your principal, and then what it grows to become is over here on the, on the other side of the equal sign, your annuity, what your money is now. So other things, we have R, and R is a rate. Watch out for rate. For example, if you have a 7.5% percent rate, that is equal to the number 0 0.075, and this is the number that you would be plugging into your formulas. A percent means that you're dividing by 100, or moving the decimal point two units to the left. So when you're given a rate, watch out and use the correct number. We have T, which usually represents time, and in your problem it should tell you what time is measured in, and we have N, and you can read the other parts of the formulas. So let's look at our first two examples, example one and example two. These problems are almost identical. There's only one change. In this first one, we're compounding our money twice per year, and in the second one, we're compounding continuously. Everything else stays the same. We're investing $500. It's at a 6% annual income or annual interest rate, and we're trying to see how long it's going to take to double to 1,000. So I'm interested to see how long it takes if we're compounding twice a year versus if we're compounding continuously. So let's figure out what formulas we're using. For this first one, since it's a certain number of times per year, we're plugging into that third formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. That's the formula that we're using. So what, how much money are we starting with? We're starting with 500. Like I said, what you're starting with will always go here as the coefficient. What it's turning into will be on the other side, and that's what the 1,000 is going to be. We want to see when it grows to 1,000. 1 is a 1, plus is a plus. The R is the rate, and 6% is 0 0.06. N is the number of times compounding, and that is twice, so that is two, and it repeats itself again up here, and then the only unknown I have is T, which makes sense since we're solving exponential equations, that that would be up in the exponent. So if I'm solving for T, I need to get rid of all of these other numbers, and they're each going to go one at a time. So the one that's farthest away is usually the one that goes first, so I'm going to divide this 500 out of here. Divide to both sides. That's just a coefficient, so whoosh, it's usually the first thing to go. 1,000 divided by 500, of course, is 2. And over here, I'm going to get this base to be together. 0 0.06 divided by 2 is just 0 0.03. And 0 0.03 plus 1 is just 1.03. So that's not too bad. I don't need it in parentheses. Eh, I'll keep it in parentheses. Raised to the 2t power. So there's my equation. The base is isolated like it needs to be, and now I can take the common log of both sides, or the natural log of both sides, or in this case I might take the log base 1.03 of both sides. 
Also, maybe I just convert this out of exponential and into logarithmic form. So now we're looking at this equation right here. And in a previous tutorial, we looked at three different ways to solve this um, exponential equation. And I encourage you to do whichever way you would like to. What I'm going to do, and I'm kind of running out of room, so I'm going to do it over here. I like to do the double arrow whenever I'm converting. I'm just going to convert out of exponential and into logarithmic. And I'm, I'm going to rewrite this as the log base 1.03 of 2 is equal to 2t. I'm just converting it out of exponential and into logarithmic form. T is almost solved for. All I would have to do is divide by 2, divide by 2, and I'll have what T is. And I'll put my little approximate sign. I need to do the log base 1.03 of 2 and then divide that by 2. And I'll just do that on the calculator. If you don't have the calculator that you can do this log base when you press math and then up, up, if you do not have this log base, then you will need to do the change of base formula, which is the common log of 2 divided by the common log of 1.03, and then divide that by 2. Watch out for your parentheses, of course. If you do have this function on your calculator, you can go ahead and do it basically in one step. There's my base, and there's my number, and I'm going to divide that by 2. I get 11.725, if I correctly round, 11.725. So 11.725, these are all word problems today, and word problems end in words, and we know that we're measuring in terms of years. So just under 12 years, we will have doubled our money. Not a bad deal. 6% is a pretty good interest rate right now. So example two is almost identical, except remember the buzzword continuously. That's the PERT formula. A equals P E to the R T. The numbers are basically going to go in the same spots, the 500 and the 1,000. So I have 1,000 here. The 500 is my coefficient. E is E. My rate is still 6%, so 0 0.06. And T is what we don't know. We're ha we have to isolate the base before we do anything else. That's why the 500 is going to divide first. And I'm going to have 2 is equal to e to the 0 0.06t. Since I'm dealing with natural, excuse me, base e, I'm going to be using natural logs. So I can either convert like I did before or take the natural log of both sides. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the natural log of 2 is equal to 0 0.06t. Remember that the natural log has that little base, so I can convert that. And now all I have to do is divide by 0 0.06, and I'll have what t is. t is approximately, let's plug this into the calculator, and I have the natural log of 2, close that parenthesis, and I'm dividing by 0 0.06, and I've got it, 11.552. 11.552 years. So a little bit faster. Yeah, maybe a couple months. When we're compounding continuously, we'll, our money will double just a little bit faster than if we were compounding twice per year. Now, if you don't like this conversion right here, some people might just take the natural log of both sides, take the natural log of 2, and the natural log of e to the 0 0.06t, but again, remember that the natural log of E goes away, and you'll have the natural log of 2 equals 0.06t, which is exactly what I had converted to anyway. So let's look at our next example, example 3. A certain type of organism can grow from 30 to 195 organisms in 5 hours. Oh boy. Find K for the growth formula. Okay, so we're using our first formula. That's the y equals ne to the kt. And we just have to plug some numbers into here. So what we're starting with in this case is the 30. And that's always going to go right here as that coefficient. What it grows to become, and it does grow in this case, to 195 organisms, 
hopefully these are good organisms uh, to have around. E is, of course, E. K is what we're looking for. T is time. And in this case, it's good to note that we're talking about hours. And then, of course, is five hours. So we'll put the five right there. So we need to solve this equation. And I'm going to start to uh, get everything away from this K. The first thing to go is this coefficient. So let's divide by 30. And 195 divided by 30 becomes 6.5. And this is e to the, if you don't mind, I'm going to write this as 5k instead of k5, so I don't need the parentheses. And there we go. We could take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of 6.5 is equal to the natural log of e to the 5k. That natural log of e will then go away. And I'll have that, I'll just write it as 5k is equal to the natural log of 6.5. Just divide by 5, and I believe we'll have our answer. k is just a constant. And in this case, let's see what we have in our calculator. Let's see, we've got natural log of 6.5. Close that parenthesis, and then divide by 5. And our constant right now is 0 0.374. So 0, I always like to start with the 0, 0.374. So this is a constant, and in this case, that represents organisms per hour. That's what this constant represents. Um, of course, we're growing. That's why the constant is positive. If the constant were negative, then we would be decaying, um, and we'd be a de it would be decreasing. So this is increasing about a third per hour. So let's look at example four. Example four, we have an investment service, and they promised to triple our money in 12 years. Well, that's fantastic. In the previous two, uh, the first two examples, we were doubling in just under 12 years. So tripling in 12 years, I would definitely take this. It says, assuming continuous compounding of interest, there's that buzzword, continuous, what rate of interest is needed? So since I know that we're continuous, I know that it's the PERT, a equals PE to the RT, and I'm going to be plugging numbers in here. Although in this case, I don't know how much we're starting with. It doesn't say how much money we're investing. It just says that we're going to be tripling. So I guess you could pick whatever you want. If you want to put in $500 and let it triple to $1,500, or if you want to put in $1 million and triple to $3 million, that would be great. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in one whole dollar. And I'm going to let it, over 12 years, grow to become three dollars. That's right. One turns into three. <laughs> you might laugh at me. I understand waiting 12 years for a dollar to grow into three dollars. But think about the very first thing we're going to do to solve this equation. So far, the very first step that we've done is divide by the coefficient. So if you choose $500, great, you're going to have to divide by 500. If you choose 1 million, great, you're going to be writing a couple zeros and then dividing by 1 million. I'm going to put in 1 so that I don't have to divide by anything. So R is, I believe that's what we're looking for, and we do know that it's going to take 12 years for this to happen. So you, again, you can put in whatever number you want for P and understand that this is going to be 3 times P. So whenever you divide by whatever P is, you're going to have a 3 over here. I put the $1 to the $3 because I think that that's funny. And mathematically, it's a little bit more efficient. So I need to get to this R. I'm going to take the natural logs again since I'm dealing with base E. I'll take the natural log of this E. to the, I'm going to write it as 12R. The natural log of E basically goes away, and I have the natural log of 3 is equal to 12R. Divide by 12, and I'll have my answer. I'll come up here. R is going to be approximately, I need the natural log of 3 divided by 12. So that is going to be natural log of 3 divided by 12. There it is, 0 0.092. 0 0.092. 0.092. That's what R is. But of course, if we're going to write the answer to this, they're looking for the rate of interest. So this is actually what the number R is. But if I want to convert that to a rate, I'm moving the, I'm multiplying by 100. And this would be 9.2%. To answer this word problem, that is what we're looking for, something with our units. It's a percent. That's a really good interest rate. If you can find something like that, put your money there.
Thanks for watching this tutorial on applications. We'll see you in class and we'll practice some more. Bye-bye. <laughs>